and I just sit there with a big smile on my face waiting my fish. Are you holding your your knife and your and your fork in one hand with like the ends sticking down on the yeah, table? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Looking one hand each. Yeah. straight ahead, not saying a word, yeah. eyes right yeah. eyes forward, straight ahead, nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Thanks again for the follow. Dave, I would stable. like to know if I hear any of the locals what like I would be hearing the conversations from neighboring tables. Uh, well, yeah, sure. Uh, give me a perception check, actually. I'd like for you to give me a okay, perception I, I, check. I can do that, right? You can. As long as it doesn't... <laughs> you are killing me. <laughs> you can definitely do that. As long as it doesn't have a double asterisk by the by the skill check, you're more than welcome to perform any skill check that you'd like. Meaning these here. Alright, so... Oh, nice roll. There's about five or six different tables in here. There is a uh, table of a couple halflings. Looks like a couple of the employees of uh, probably a couple more of the uh, the Reed Banks family. There are there's actually a couple Hell Knights in here. There there it looks like they're probably eating lunch. There is also uh, an elderly gentleman in here. There is also probably it looks to be like a like a farmer i mean you can see that he has like a like a walking stick you know big like a big big goatee no no beard or nothing like that uh you can also hear a couple well not a couple but a table of four or five uh they're they're kind of every once in a while you can hear taxes or whatnot and you keep looking over at the hell knights saying oh wow you know but the hell knights they're in their own little world over there and that's that's pretty much what you see. But you hear just, you know, typical conversation, you know, what's going on and you know, stuff like right, that. Right, that's what I'm looking just, for. Is like, you know, uh, pitter-patter of the town. Did you hear, girl? Did you hear this? Oh, no, you okay. didn't. Stuff like that, you know. All right. So <laughs> just that, gossip. that really catches my, my curiosity of, like, you know, something going wrong or, you know... Uh, mm -mm gate broken or you know you know there was an attack the other night at someone's farm or something like that no no okay I will uh enjoy my food right, well you guys haven't gotten it yet but we'll say that uh Francine she comes back out after about 15-20 uh, minutes Brings you your food. Everybody's food looks delicious, smells delicious. Ve, your stomach oh. is starting to grumble. Actually, I see all this food. I did not know it was like this. Mm, it can, is... I, can I have some of that? We have, sure. You can have whatever you want. We have the fanciest tables in the town. Now, is the meals included with our and room? And the best drink. Room? Is oh, room no. Board, or is this, is, this is all separate. Okay. Uh, I point at uh, Dirt's dish and tell them I want one of those. <laughs> she says, I'll bring you one right out. This, what are we looking for costs first, on this? This is my uh, first time to town. Let's see. Let's open up the core rule book here and go to equipment. Uh, traveling. You're going to get a, uh, a meal. <clears throat> oh, not there. Maybe I think it's equipment. Hmm. A meal, a good meal, is about uh it's gonna cost a total of two gold for every one at the table. Basically five five silver apiece. Even though we don't really go buy silver in the game, uh, we'll just say that it's there's it's the Reed Bank special today. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a two for one gold. gold. Yeah, it's a it's a two for one today. Yeah, I'm prepared to do sort of like Applebee's. decimal systems on the gold. Yeah, it's uh everybody. It's it's a half a gold. So if you want to do the decimal point, that's fine. I could care less. So I just don't like silver, copper, or it's cumbersome. So agreed. All right. So your oh, actually the the room. That's that's another good good question. 
there, Dave. Yeah. As uh, as um, Francine. Yeah, as Francine puts the food down, you mm -hmm. know she's giving everybody else their plates. I, I quickly, I quickly dig into the fish, and take a big old bite of it. Do you? I say, oh, Francine, this fish is sweeter than your ass, honey. She just <sighs> typical half orc, and then she just snubs you and walks away. <laughs> I think she liked it. This is actually I think a. You should actually, too, <clears throat> you should try it. You should go after her. This is a pretty good establishment, so it's going to cost you a gold a day to stay here. And then the meals are always a half, and you always get a couple drinks also with the with the meal. So you guys are free to chitter chatter with one another. I think you guys are saying you wanted to talk. Huh? You guys go for it. But yeah, I'd, I'd say it's it's not time to you know rent a room or anything. It's still midday. We should go talk to um, what's the uh, uh Dav Davener. Yeah. Davener. Who's that? Davener. Reed Bank. Ah, it's yes, Royce. Royce. Yeah. yeah. Royce. Who is this Royce? Huh. I agree with you. I think we should go up there and talk to him and see if he knows anything about getting one of those letters that you guys keep talking about. Not Abernard Royce. It's Abernard Red Red Bank. Not Reed Bank. No, it's and Royce. The... Abernard no. Royce is the one looking for adventures. Uh, Dolivar Reed Bank. He is the owner of the Juliver Arms Inn. Oh, Dolliver. That's who we need to right. talk about. He was also Dolliver. looking for adventures. Uh, you're right, you're right, he, right, yes, that is correct. He is. Yes. yes. But the one we need to get the uh, the warrant from is Abenard? No. no. We don't know who yet. You don't know we who? Don't know oh, okay. Who. Yeah. That's why we need to talk to him. That's why I want you guys to RP this out. This is something different uh, that, that I've not tried, and I, I'm kind of liking it so far. Dirt, did you not ask Dolliver about this warrant? No, he's too busy stuffing his face currently. Scribus, thanks yeah. for the follow. <laughs> I told him about the tail. He's got, you know, fish and stuff, fish juice dripping down his chin, you know, all over his bib that he has on. Would this be cotton candy uh, rep fish? I'd say uh, just a, a <laughs> zesty type of fish that has local herbs Lemon. and seasonings. Cotton candy wrapped fish with uh, chocolate sprinkles on it. Oh no, God, please! <laughs> that was uh, crumpets. <clears throat> yep, yeah. You guys got to me getting hungry, actually. So, mm -hmm. lad dog, are you going to talk to Kane about Kate about getting your tail removed or what? Because you know I'm tired <laughs> of hearing you cry about it when people make fun of you. But I know <clears throat> you're excited right now because I hit it. I hear it hitting the, uh, the back. <laughs> what of your arm. the? F are you talking about sounds a like a, tail? It, it sounds like a Vienna sausage banging around <laughs> the bottom of the can. Come on, man. Ask him for God's <laughs> sakes. This is unbelievable. Yeah, Dave, if you missed that, uh, that dog has a tail. Yeah, I remember that from the backstory, but I, <laughs> I didn't know that he was wanting to get it cut off. Yeah, that's yes. why they were looking for Cade. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Welcome to the game, Dave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can I'm perform so... the special cir the circumcision process ritual of doing that much later, though. Circumcision <laughs> process of the tail? Absolutely. <laughs> you all die of brain aneurysms. Thank you for playing. <laughs> oh, my God. I circumcision. I think it's more a castration <clears throat> If you don't leave <laughs> circumcision is the removal of the skin around the protruding uh, object. If you do a good job, I'll let you keep the tip. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So you you don't you can't perform the magic now, Cade. I currently cannot. I'm sorry. Oh, Although if, even if I could, I probably wouldn't. In your case. We, we, <laughs> we, we were hoping that you were the best choice for this matter. Well, I'm happy to disappoint you, but I currently cannot. 
Well, I like to tell. <laughs> well, thank you, Faye, but it's very uncomfortable. It does cause pain. Maybe you can get it to longer. Cute. Wow. There are 30 Dungeons & Dragons games being streamed right now. 30. Can you believe that? Oh, just no. the weekend. That's that's awesome. I remember first streaming, there was like two people. Five. Yeah, like two. Yeah. <laughs> 30 people, that is awesome. That's a lot of people. Are you done yet, Dirt? Yeah, I'm done with my dinner. Of course I'm not. All right, wipe that shit off your face. Wipe that shit off your face and it's good. <laughs> save God it for later, damn. but okay. Unbelievable. Like I, I uh, take my napkin off from under my armor for the corner was tucked in and I wipe my mouth ever so gently. Daintily by the corners. And then I look over at Kane and say, well, any one of you guys want to go over and talk to Dolliver with me? I'm I'm ready to go. Oh. Hmm. So we walk casually over to Dolliver. Hmm. I look at Faye and go, I don't know if this is a good idea or sit here and watch. <laughs> <laughs> I just got my food, so I'm going to do this. Now, as Big Dirt, uh, as you two are walking up to the bar, uh, the door opens and a, a female walks in. And she seems to take a seat at one of the empty tables. What just sort of like, like a. On a scale? Uh, how about you can give me a calmness roll or a looks roll? I know I don't not sure what you guys want to call it, but if you want to give me a D twenty, that's fine. That's what she'll look like for you, yeah. Dirt. So she's a uh, she's pretty cute. <clears throat> yeah. She uh, she is pretty cute. Her calmness is is pretty good. Or as you guys call it, hotness rolls. I, I call it calmness. Uh, but... <laughs> Her sexy hotness. Is She's pretty cute. So she comes in. She's by herself. She, you know, she takes a seat. You know, have we seen her before? Or Francine. Is no, you haven't seen her. Right no, you guys have been down here. You know, eating pretty much three squares a day here, and you haven't seen her come in yet. So I look over <laughs> at uh, I look over at, at Dollar. Here we go. And I go, Lordy, Lordy, look, you <laughs> just walk through the door. Here we go. Let me do a perception check to see if she heard you say that. Cause I'm, cause I'm sure she would probably uh, hear this kind of stuff from time to time. Ah, she didn't hear you. But did he? <clears throat> Dolliver, you know, he's he's looking at you at about eye level, and he asked you if you'd like to uh, renew your rooms for the night. Yeah, I think we will be staying around, Oliver. You've got the best food in town. I can't think of a better place to stay. Ah, yes we do. We pride ourselves on our fancy tables. And we have the cleanest rooms in Fort Inevitable. <laughs> Probably cleaner than a lot of the houses and farms around. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you only have, you have the only tavern in town. No, there's... Oh, well... We we are the best tavern in town. We're not the only tavern. There is the Helm Lady down the road also. But uh, that is uh, the Helm Lady. That's if you like to hang out with the Hell Knights. That's that's where they like to hang out. In any case, do you know of any... How are we going... How do we gain the letter of warrant that's required to do these adventures. Oh, you're adventurers, huh? I would hope that would have been obvious. Hmm. Yeah, don't get caught. You'll be you'll be putting a slammer quick here in Fort Inevitable. They think that uh, the adventurers are bandits. <laughs> Silly hell knights. And he kind of talks, he brings the tone of his voice down a little bit. Because there are a couple Hell Knights in here eating, so... But he tells you, well, it's kind of, uh, kind of your lucky day. Because, uh, see that beautiful young lady over there that just walked in? She, her name is, uh, Starcloak. And she is the leader of the Golden Fire Order of Thornkeep. So, uh, I'm pretty sure she's, she wanted, she's contacted me. And just so... 
she didn't have to put her name on the board. So I'm I'm taking you you found my my message in the marketplace, correct? Well, silly yes. me. Huh, that's the only place I really advertised it. <laughs> so, yes, she's yeah, you looking. you could have posted up a little higher, but she. Well, you know, I. Hey, I'm a tall halfling. What are you talking about? I am pretty tall. I'm well above the average halfling's height. I take regard to that. Yeah. So, anyways, maybe if you're looking for adventure. Maybe you could talk to uh, Mrs. Starcloak over there. She may be able to help you out. And what of the letter of warrants to be able to even work in this? Hmm. Well, that's that's another tricky thing, you see. Yeah, you might want to get with her before that. Uh, some things may require a letter of warrant. Some may not, if you know what I mean. Are you trying to get us arrested? <laughs> I'm not the one that's going to take the adventure or not, so that choice is up to you. But if it was me, I'd probably get the letter of warrant, but it also depends on the job. If, you, if you're going to do something that uh, would probably bring yourself attention from the Hell Knights and Lady Drovast herself, then I would probably, I would probably ignore the warrant letter and probably just kind of freelance it. And just hope that uh, you don't get caught in the act. <laughs> kind of chuckles a couple more times. And he goes, so are you guys going to be uh, staying here in Inevitable for, you know, any length of uh, period of time? Well, we may have to get back to you on that. Uh. We'll go talk to the Lady Starcloak first and decide then what we'll do. All right. Well... Go back down to your table. Uh, let's wait for these Hell Knights to leave. And we'll we'll see if I can uh, get you set up with anything. With something. Is there anything else that you need? I hope my niece is providing good service for you. Francine, she is one of my... Eh, she's one of my more friendly nieces. Well, I, I believe that's it. Do you have anything else, Dirk? Alt tab, unmute, go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. I take his silence as a no. So we will. No, I, I don't have any. <laughs> at this point. Dirty, you are. You need a nap button. You need a little nap time. I, I didn't know that he asked me. I thought he was asking you something. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, uh, Thanks for playing, Dirt, and listen you know, I'm only 10,000 XP away from getting my next tier 8 tank, okay? Relax. <laughs> Starcloak was the leader of what? The Golden what? She's the leader of the Golden Fire Order of Thornkeep. Wow. <laughs> the go She's just the leader of the Golden Fire Order of Thornkeep. So, which is... Thornkeep is another... She's actually she's she's visiting basically Fort Inevitable. Thornkeep is its own entity and provides its own jurisdiction for you know its slice of the pie of the River Kingdoms. That is a mouthful of a title. Hmm. All right, so I guess we just head back to the table and uh, let the others know. About what's going on. Unbelievable backstory, Bigger. I can't believe it. And and I thought the Lost Mine of Andelver was uh was crazy. This definitely takes the pie. Oh yeah. So what else? What else do you guys uh what else do you think? Well, I think for, uh, we're, yeah, we're just right now. I think we're just gonna hang out. Wait for Vay to finish her food. Wait for the nice to leave, and then talk yeah. to Vay yeah. Starcloak. Vay, Francine, <laughs> Francine brought out Vay's food as as you guys were up talking to Dolliver. I'm really loving this. That yeah, and it's you know the fish, and I know you like fish, so. It's good. Yeah, I'm not used to spices and stuff. This is great. Mm. 
So the Hell Knights leave in about 15 minutes as you guys are rambling on with one another, talking about cutting off a uh, Ladox tail and circumcisions of the tail. And the Hell Knights leave. You know, they they put on their their chainmail coifs and they head out. All right. I assume days finished eating by now too. Yeah. I am done. Okay, I nudge her and kind of gesture over. Man. I nudge her and gesture over to Lady Starcloak. We should probably talk to her now. Alright. So, as you guys are going back up to talk to Dolliver, uh, the female, she gets up. She also comes over to the bar and stands alongside with, I believe it is uh, you and Big Dirt that are up at the bar, correct? Probably what you two are the last ones that went up there last time, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, unless the other <coughs> are coming with us. So. It depends on what Ladok and, and Vey would like to do. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll go with it. Mm-hmm. All right. So you guys, I guess you guys are all up there, Vey. You get your food finished. And she introduces herself you know, as Alara Starcloak. And, you know, she kind of looks at Dolliver a little bit, and he, he shakes his head. And she asks if, if you guys are adventurers, or, or are you with the local mercenaries guild? I, I assure you. We are not with any guild of any kind. We are acting on our own here. So you do not work for the Salamander Company here in Fort Inevitable? I have your word no. you do not work for them? Okay. Yes, you do. Okay. So, I have a predicament that I am in. There is a situation that happened several weeks ago. A couple of my wizards, Tiawask and Jarun, uh, they are from Thornkeep, which is where I am and my order is from. They set out to explore the ruins of the Emerald Spire, and their job was to research the underground portals. Well, it's been several weeks, going on actually the third week now, and they have yet to return. They're both part of my order, which is, you know, I am the leader of the Golden Fire Order. And I'm actually really seriously concerned about my missing colleagues. And I would like a, a reliable party. And she kind of looks you guys over, up and down. And she asks you if you've ever adventured in or around the Emerald Spire. She she kind of asks you, and she she seems to be a little concerned, and asks if if you are grizzled seasoned adventurers. Um, we are not the adventurers. However, ah, I do know of the I area. I see. I lived and around the woods near the spire, so I know of the place. Okay, so you would have no problem finding it then. Although, once you get to the once you get to the line of the the forest, anyway, you're able to see the the spire sticking up, you know, somewhat almost, you know, thousands of tens of thousands of feet into the air, probably a mile. So, what do you know of the? Do you know anything of the spire? Or, seeing that you're from this area, I would have to. Have say you been that around the? Have you been around the towering runes? Of the of the Emerald Spire, no one's been inside of the the dungeon. I tend to stay away from dungeons, but if the case warrants it. Hmm. I've been meaning to go in there for some time, but I haven't had a reason to yet. Oh, well, this could possibly be the reason for you to go. Well, I am meaning to leave inevitable. I do need to get back to Thornkeep uh, by the end of the day. Well, I have to leave by the end of the day. 
So I'll tell you what, if you can find these wizards, like I said, their names are Tiawask and Jarun. If you find them, uh, please bring them back. Hopefully they are okay. I am concerned they are valuable colleagues of mine. And they they were supposed to be in the rooms. Uh, they, they told me if they had time, they would go inside of the dungeon. But the dungeon is a very it's a very dangerous place. You know, they were supposed to just research the portal stones. Portal stones? What are those? Ah, uh, the, uh, the portal stones, they, they teleport you and another passenger to many different levels of this dungeon. And they want to try to you know, record some of these glyphs, and there was a, uh, they had a, a shard, and this shard is what teleports you. So if you, you know, if you know the, the meaning of the symbol on the spire for that level, you can basically touch the rune, mumble the activation word, touch the key, and it will teleport you to any level that you know the rune inscription and the name for that level. So, hmm. possibly they could have found some information out. They could have possibly teleported into the dungeon. They could be dead. I don't know. But uh, I am concerned about them and I would like to have them back in Thornkeep. Even if they are dead. They may dead. have teleported and forgot to the teleport back. Well, that could be a problem too. And if we do not find any remains or them alive, then I'm sure you did what you could do. Now, did you mention how much of this space? No, she did not discuss that. I uh, I didn't think you would you would ask. So, uh, I am willing to pay you 2,000 gold pieces uh, per person. So if you bring them back alive, I'll give you a total of 4,000 gold for your group. Oh, I thought she was saying per person and for us. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. And when she, well, it's, it's basically 1,000 per person. And when she says this, you guys are kind of like, holy shit, did she just say 4,000 freaking gold? This is like, this is mad gold. That's a lot of gold. That is, that's a lot of gold. Uh, I <laughs> think it's a lot of gold. Is that a lot of gold? She goes, oh. it's a lot big time, bitches. Trust me, one of me, it is a lot of gold. <laughs> is there a chest swire anywhere? <laughs> Do we have a rogue in the party? <laughs> I will keep the reward here with Dolliver and he can award it to you if the two wizards are found. Alive, correct? I, I would have liked them alive, or if you find their body.